guys in this video I'm gonna show you guys how to figure out your articulation agreements so basically from wherever uh, whichever community college you guys are attending you know whether it's in California New York Texas um, I'm gonna tell you or I'm gonna show you um, how it's done how to look at the classes and find the classes that transfer over properly to the school that you want to go to so obviously I don't know um, you know which community college you guys go to or which for your universities you want to transfer to but I'm gonna give you my example on what I did for USC so I'll show you guys um, how I did it for my community college which is Las Positas and how it transferred over to USC but even though the website may look different, even though the classes may be different, um, the core fundamentals is still the same. You're going to look at a site that looks similar to this, and the process is going to be relatively the same. But I'll show you how it's done um, in my scenario, which was uh, my local community college to USC. So basically, you go to Google, um, and you type in articulation agreement. Um, to USC and Las Positas College. Okay, so obviously I made some typo errors. Oops. And this is the website that I used. Um, that was for USC specifically. So you click on this, and it tells you you know which region is your community college in. So this is not. Uh, what school you want to transfer to but rather which school your community college is so I'm in California I'm in Northern California in the San Francisco Bay Area um, if you're in San Diego area you choose this if you're in Los Angeles you choose that and etc etc so I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area so I click this and then here it says select school um, which community college do you go to for me, I went to Las Positas College and also Chabot College. Um, like I said, they're two different names, but they're actually the same school. It's uh, sister colleges, I believe, or satellite schools. So basically, um, you know, if I take classes from Chabot uh, and I take classes at Las Positas, both of my classes will be shown on my one transcript, on the same transcript. Um, and I'm not sure if this applies to any other colleges, um, but for me, for Las Positas and Chabot specifically, um, they are the same. So I click Las Positas. And here it shows me um, all the classes that I have to take. And you know, keep in mind, this may look kind of confusing at first. It kind of looks like a lot, like, oh, dude, what the hell, I have to take all these classes? No. Um, so here, this is for fall 2018 to summer 2019. So the most recent one for me, it was like, like, I don't know, when did I transfer like 2015? So it was like fall 2015 to uh, summer 2016. So basically for USC specifically, and like I said, um, it's going to differ depending on where you apply, but the same concept or the concept is the same. It's the fundamentals are exactly the same. So for here, there's separate categories that I have to fulfill if I want to transfer um, to USC and have the highest trans highest chances of transferring. So category A, I have to choose the arts, and you know this doesn't mean that I have to ch take every single class. It basically means that out of all these sections here, art, history, humanities, music, philosophy, photography, theater, arts, I just have to choose one. So think about it, you know, you're given what, like 15 different class options, you can only choose, or you have to only choose one, um, if you want to um, apply and transfer to USC successfully, um, obviously, you know, it's not just you take the class and you transfer, you have to get a good grade, you have to get an A, or aim for an A, um, so for me, what I did was, um, I tried to find the easiest class um, for me personally, you know. Um, for some, it may be theater arts, you know, but I'm not trying to do, I'm not trying to act and stuff. Um, so, you know, I did music. 
um, because I like music a lot. And I also read the reviews for all the classes. Um, you know, which professors are the best, which professors are the easiest, you know, which classes fit my schedule the best. So it all depends on, you know, who you are, what your situation is, you know, it, do you work, um, is your work hectic schedule, or work schedule hectic, which prevents you from taking certain classes at a certain time, you have to keep all those in mind. So for me, I did music five, I believe, um, I have to double check, it's on my transcript, but I'm pretty sure it's music five. And the reason why I did Music 5 was because normally for classes, um, you go to one same class twice a week. Um, so let's say if you take uh, you know, music, um, you may have a music class Monday and then the music class Wednesday. And they may be like an hour and a half or two hours per class. But for me, this class, this specific music class um, was once a week at night for four hours. Um, which may seem like a lot, but it was actually really chill because night classes are usually very chill and you don't stay the full five or the full four hours in class. And the teacher that I, the professor that I did research on, apparently he was hella easy. And when I got to class and he gave out assignments and homeworks and tests, indeed, it was very, very easy. Um, so I took music five. Um, and like I said, while most classes are uh two twice a week this was once a week so i could just get it over it finish with it it was a monday night i think it was like 6 to 10 p.m very chill class the class didn't even end at 10 so i chose this class um i got a very simple a and you basically do that for each category um for all the ones that says uh you know this one says two courses required one course required one course required one course required so you know category a choose one class whatever it is you can do philosophy three you can do humanities 44 um, and just because all these classes are shown doesn't mean that they they will be um, um, accessible um, in your community college so for example even though it tells you oh you have all these options here some of your schools may not um, provide these classes and that was the case for me not for this category, but for a different category. That's why I had to go to um, two different community colleges, you know, Las Positas and Chabot, because I think Las Positas didn't have one one uh, class that I needed, so I had to drive uh, to a separate college, which wasn't too bad. So basically, you know, for category B, you repeat the same steps. You look at all the classes that you have to take right here, and it gives you... Um, you know, English, history, philosophy, religious studies, etc. And you have to choose two. Um, and so for what I did was I did English. Uh, I'm not sure which English it was, but it was basically the easiest one. I, I didn't really care which class it was. I didn't care, um, you know, if it was like women's literature or like African literature. I don't even know if, if there's such a thing, but... Um, I just chose the one that was the easiest. And the way to do this is, um, you know, like I've said before, and I'll link it below, is you go to ratemyprofessors.com and you try to find the classes that you have to take that are required. And you basically do some, um, do some investigative research, you know, do some filtering. Um, some professors, even though it's, you know, like let's say history too, um, this dude might be maybe hell of fucking hard, um, even though it's you just need to take one of these. And you know, history twenty eight may be a really easy teacher. Um, so you have to do your research. You can't just blindly go here and say, oh, you know, category B, I need two. I'm just gonna do this. You know, twenty five and twenty eight. I mean, you can, but you know, what if you get two, both of them, hell of hard teachers? Like, it's not worth it. You gotta do your research. Try to find the ones that are the easiest. And for example, let's say that you're not really good at religious studies or you know philosophy, but the teacher is easy, then I recommend you going with the easiest option. Like I said, and like I will always say, you know, the goal of community college isn't really to, you know, quote unquote learn. You know, I mean that may sound kind of wrong, but 
I mean, you can learn if you want, and if you get good teachers, you will learn. But the main goal of community college, particularly for you, if you want to transfer, is to get an A. And if you can get an A by choosing the easiest teacher, that is the way you should go. I mean, why would you want to struggle? Why would you want to work extra harder just to get the same A? Um, you could do that at the school you transfer to, but in community college, your main goal is to transfer and the way to transfer successfully is by getting a good GPA. And how do you get a good GPA? You get an A. So that's what you have to do. And it's the same step for all the other um, categories. Um, you know, category C, you choose two courses. So you can choose anthropology five, you know, anthropology two, and then, you know, you may ch choose history 14. Um, I did anthropology and I also did uh, psychology. And anthropology was um, at Chabot College, which was a different college that I had to drive to. And that was actually because um, there was a professor at Las Positas College uh, with the same anthropology class, but his class was apparently really, really hard. Um, but even though that class was available, I decided to still just go to the different college. Um, same anthropology class, but with a much easier teacher. And it was indeed very easy, and I got an A in that as well. And for psychology, um, I took an online course. So, you know, I just did it at home. I didn't. It doesn't matter um, whether you take an online course at, you know, college A or college B. Um, an online course is an online course. So you can do wherever you want, um, and it will still show up on your same transcript. And usually classes like sociology, psychology, poli sci, history, um, I don't know about economics, but these classes, um, a, lot of, um, a lot of them provide online classes because you don't really need a professor to, to study this kind of stuff, you know? Like for example, like econ or like, like chemistry, you know, I mean, you can study your alone, but it's hella fucking hard, you know? That's why you need a professor or a teacher um, right next to you to help guide you on, you know, doing successfully on the exams and tests and whatnot. But most of the times, um, these humanities type of classes, they give you online courses. So if they give you that opportunity and you also do your research and find out that the classes are easy, then 100% go for the online classes. Because like I said, your main goal is to get an A. If you can get an easy A, that's what you have to do. Don't struggle. Try your best not to struggle to get an A because it's not worth it. Um, it's really not worth it. And for foreign languages, um, I had to take, I actually took Spanish 1 and, and a little bit of a side story. I'm really bad at foreign language. I don't know why. Um, like my brain is just not wired properly for foreign languages. And I had to take Spanish 1A um, three times, actually. So middle school, I took Spanish 1A. High school, I took Spanish 1A. And then community college, I took Spanish 1A. And even though I had, like, two, three years of Spanish experience, like, dude, I still did not even understand, <laughs> like, anything about the language. It was just so difficult. But it was a requirement, so... Um, you know, I took Spanish 1A um, and Spanish two, uh, 1B, I believe. It was either 1B or um, or one s or 2A. So basically, I took three semesters of foreign language at community college. So three semesters of Spanish. Um, but, you know, this was actually one of the classes that I had to study really, really hard in. And, you know, some people, it, you might have it easier... Um, you know, depending on the professor or whether or not you're good at language, but this is, it can go either way. If you're bad at language, um, then it's going to be hard. If you're good at language, then it's going to be easy. But, you know, if you're given these three options, uh, which was I, which what I was given personally, um, I wasn't given any other languages. Like, there's no Chinese, there's no Korean. You know, if I can do Korean, I'd go for Korean, but I was only given Spanish. So I took Spanish 1A, um, and then 1B. And I'm not sure actually if I took um, a third semester of Spanish. But what I did was I fulfilled um, the most required uh, 
uh, what do you call it? I finished up all the requirements needed for USC transferring um, for foreign language for Spanish. And then at USC, I still had to um, fulfill a third semester. And, you know, I wasn't going to do Spanish at, at USC. It was way too difficult. Um, so I actually took a language uh, placement test. Um, I'm Korean. So I took a co Korean foreign language test and I passed. Um, I don't know what grade I got, but I passed. And I'm not even that good at Korean. Like my speaking is pretty good, but in terms of like grammar and writing and like reading and stuff like that, it's, it's like second grade level, but like, actually it is like second grade level, but I still managed to pass it. So I um, opted out of foreign language entirely at USC, which was great because I fucking hate the foreign language. I mean, this shit is so hard to me for me. Um, so other than that, these are the most important classes that you have to um, uh, take. So, you know, if you're staying two years at community college, which is what I did, you have to make sure that you fit all these classes in your two years at community college. So that's four semesters. You can space it out as much as you want or however you want. But for me, I wanted to show USC that I completed all my required classes. And you have to keep in mind that even though there's four semesters um, in two years at community college, you're submitting your application in your third semester. So, you know, if you take, if you, if you don't finish all the required categories and you take, you know, let's say you had category B left, two courses left, but you take this at the last semester, they're still going to look at it, but your grade isn't going to be shown because the semester hasn't even been completed yet. So to avoid that scenario and to make sure that I had the highest chances of transferring, I squeezed all these required categories that I needed um, in three semesters. So for example, like my second semester, I would take, you know, these two courses and then maybe like this course, so like three courses, and then I'll take a foreign language. Um, but you can space it out as, as however you want. Just don't overboard yourself um, because like I said, your goal is to get a straight A's. And if you make it too difficult, if you make it too much, it's going to be a lot of work because, you know, GEs are easy. Community colleges is easy in general. But if you just put too much work on yourself, um, that just creates too much stress. And too much stress usually doesn't lead to good results. So make sure you know yourself. Make sure you know how to pace yourself. Other than that, these are also um, the classes uh, that transfer over from my specific community college to USC. So, you know, while these are required requirements, you need them 100%. Um, you still have to f fill up the rest of your units. So for UC transfers, I believe it's 60 units max that transfer over. And for USC, I think it's 64. And that might also, that might also rep uh, apply to other private schools. So 64 units is the most units that will transfer over. So for example, you know, let's say you took 70 units at community college. If you're going to UC, only 60 units of the 70 will transfer over. And, you know, for USC, if I took 70 units, it'll be only 64 units that will transfer over. So you have to make sure which classes transfer over because if you take random ass classes and you just... Um, and you, you submit your application without doing your research, you know, let's say you took, um, okay, let's say, okay, this is econ one, econ two, and this transfers over, but let's say there's an imaginary, um, econ three that you took and without realizing it, you took it and you got an A and then you look back at this articulation form and you're like, hold up, where's econ three? It's not listed here. Dude, that means you fucked up. <laughs> That means um, you took a semester of a class that you didn't need and ultimately didn't even transfer. Um, so you just wasted that class. So you don't want to do that. That's just a waste of time. And it's just a waste of your hard earned effort. So you got to go to your articulation agreement and look at the classes that transfer over. This is so important. This is so crucial. And, you know, there's so many classes that transfer over. So the chances of you... Um, um, you know, choosing a class that doesn't transfer is pretty low, but at the same time, there still is that chance. So 
you want to do your research. Don't go into it blindly. Um, and these are all just all the other classes um, that transfer for credit. So basically, the articulation agreement is um, your bread and butter, dude. Like, you got to understand this inside and out. And, you know, like I said, first glance, it seems kind of intimidating. It seems like a lot of stuff, but it's actually very simple if you just read into it very carefully. Oh, okay. And this one, I didn't even know this existed. I don't think they had this when I had when I applied, but um, these this shows you that course of the classes that don't transfer over. So let's say that you took auto repair, okay? Or let's say you took this class because you know nobody does auto repair. But let's say you took like you want to go into pre med and you want to do biology. So you're like, oh, I want to take biology forty six G. You work really hard. You get an A. And then you come back to this articulation agreement and you realize that this doesn't transfer over. That means you're fucked. That means it didn't transfer over. It doesn't mean you're fucked, but it just means that you have to take extra classes um, next semester to compensate for um, the class that didn't even transfer. So that you just waste a time. You just wasted a semester or a quarter. Don't do that. Go to the articulation agreement um, and figure out uh, which classes transfer over, which classes that you want to take um, for your particular major. Um, you got to do your research. You got to be specific. And yeah, that's basically it for articulation. Um, like I said, and I'll, um, I'm going to repeat it, this is specifically for USC. Since I applied to USC, um, if I wanted to go to a different um, private school or a different school, you know, the layout may look different. You know, here, instead of saying USC, it may say, you know, NYU or Chapman or whatever, you know, and it just may look different in terms of how it looks on the screen, but the core concept is exactly the same. You have to find out which classes transfer over. You have to find out which classes don't transfer over, and you have to make sure to plan your schedule um, accordingly to, you know, wherever you want to go. And yeah, that's it for this section.